Hey guys, this is Jabroni, and today I want to show you one more video on beating the dreaded five square base. Now, why am I showing another video? Because this time the enemy queen and king were both located up here in this top left corner. Well, not really corner, but top left side. And all three infernos were multi target infernos, and none of the expos were. Um, pointing to only ground. They were all pointing to air and ground. So normally, in fact, in one of my previous videos, when there's all multi-infernos, um, I like normally doing dragons on this space, but dragons are probably best for three-starring this design when you have at least maybe two of the expos pointing to only ground. But in this case, um, since all the expos were pointing to air and ground, I didn't feel like dragons were the best choice. So then what are you looking at? Well, Obviously, the main issue with this base, as I've said in my other videos, is the weird wall design makes it difficult for like a mass yeti attack. And I've seen it done with mass yetis um, and bowlers, but I just didn't think I could do it. So I'm looking for like hogs or miners. Since both the king and queen were next to each other, I decided I didn't need to use any miners. And what I was going to use is a blimp to take down the town hall. So... Here's the troops that I decided to cook up. You can see I brought three balloons. Um, one of them is a test balloon for the baby dragon. Another is a balloon that's a test balloon for the healers. And the third balloon is a test balloon for the blimp that I will eventually deploy to take down the town hall. Um, three yetis in the ice golem kind of makes a small little kill squad along with the three healers that will join the king and the queen. And then you have 24 hogs and six wizards for cleanup. Here's what I used for my clan castle. I requested five sneaky goblins so that way they can take down the town hall without needing a rage. The five barbarians come out first, and if there's any giant bombs around that town hall, they'll trigger them and die before the sneaky goblins come out. So that's why I brought five barbarians. And then I brought a dragon um, because the dragon can actually survive the the bomb that goes off when the town hall is destroyed. So that's why I brought the dragon and then the balloon. I don't really think the balloon was that useful. I mean, it, it has crash damage, but the town hall is already destroyed at that point. Um, if there somehow is a black seeking air mine, then there's a small chance the balloon might, you know, absorb it instead of the dragon. But honestly, the balloon didn't really do much. Um, you see, I requested two free spells. I also then made a rage, a jump spell, and then three heal spells, the rage and the jump are for the kill squad, and then the three heal spells are for the hogs. All right, so let's go over the plan. What I decided to do is I had to create the funnel for the kill squad. I want them to come in this area to take down the enemy queen, the enemy king, um, the scatter shot, one of those multi-infernos, and then also the enemy clan castle troops. Now that's a big deal, which is why I used three yetis, an ice golem, and three healers along with the king and queen because I need a beefy enough kill squad to get all those different targets taken down. I thought about doing a queen charge, but my worry with the queen charge is that you have to use multiple rages to keep the queen alive. So I thought, and then you also have to somehow try to wall break into the, you know this compartment here to reach that inferno because the queen can't actually reach over the wall to get that inferno. So I just thought that'd be way too much of a spell investment to do only a queen walk or queen charge so that's why i decided to do the mini kill squad with the healers all right so how do i funnel the kill squad well i used a test balloon and a baby dragon up here to take down these two um what are those things called uh barracks and then i used i figured i could use a wizard in this corner over here at nine o'clock to take down the uh workshop and the army camp Fortunately, my wizard, you'll see, actually ends up taking down the laboratory. So that was kind of nice. So that makes that part of the funnel. And then I bring an ice golem somewhere around here. It starts to tank these defenses. And then I bring the rest of uh, the yetis, the three yetis, and the king and the queen. They all come, um, you know, like I said, towards the enemy king, the enemy queen. I use a jump spell right around here to give my kill squad access to the enemy scattershot and the inferno and then at that point they're also going to lure the enemy clan castle troops so i have to bring a poison as well to help with that i am going to use a rage spell for my kill squad to be able to get through that area 
And one more thing, I will use one of my free spells on that scatter shot to, you know, just give my kill squad a temporary cover. So that way they're not dying too quickly to that scatter shot. And the nice thing with having a scatter shot next to the Inferno is that I can actually freeze them both at the same time. So that's really nice. All right, so once all that stuff is cleared out, then the next portion of the attack is bringing in the hogs. And what I decided to do is I brought several hogs with the Royal Champion to target that multi-inferno. Then the rest of the hogs I brought from here with the Grand Warden to target the rest of the defenses. Heal spell placement. I have to use one of my heal spells here. And then you have to decide when you want to bring your blimp and when to use the Grand Warden's ability. I decided that I was going to bring the blimp from somewhere around here to then come in at the town hall. And so that's when I then time my warden's ability, which also serves two more purposes. It keeps my troops temporarily invisible, not sorry, not invisible, invincible um, from that scatter shot and also from the royal champion. And so that's huge because then while those troops are invinci in invincible, um, and the royal enemy royal champion is trying to pick off the hogs, but it can't, then my royal champion can take down that enemy royal champion while the troops are temporarily invincible. So that's key. Then I have two more heal spells. Um, you know, you, you just use them wherever you need to. Maybe one around here, um, maybe another one around here. Um, and, you know, then you have wizards for cleanup. Now, one thing I will tell you that I messed up on. I should have brought either a miner or maybe two minions because, I'm going to zoom in, this builder hut is not reachable by the wizards. And so that builder hut ended up remaining up. And this was poor planning on my part. If I would have brought a miner, I could have, the miner could have come in later in the attack to take down that builder hut or maybe a minion. Now, the problem with a minion is that a minion can be shot down by a, by a red air bomb. So you might want to bring two minions and one is kind of a test minion. And then the other one comes in if, if the first one died from a red air bomb. So that's something I would recommend if you're going to replicate this attack, bring a miner or maybe a couple minions for any type of builder hut that is not reachable by the wizards. All right, so let's take a look at this attack. We got the test balloon with the baby dragon, and we have the wizard down here at 9 o'clock, and their purpose is to take down some buildings. Unfortunately, my baby dragon did not get the second barracks. That was my fault and where I placed it. Um, it didn't end up being a big deal. My kill squad still was able to funnel toward the uh, enemy king, the enemy queen, and the scattershot, um, and the enemy clan castle troops. So... Actually, I brought my Ice Golem from a different side than what I think I told you when I was drawing up the plan. But still, Ice Golem serves the same purpose. It provides as a temporary tank for the king and the um, yeti and then the queen behind. Um, you'll see I did use a test balloon before I put the healers down. Um, unfortunately, the healers are starting to get destroyed by that air defense. So I do lose one of the healers to the air defense. Actually, I lost two of them. So that was a little unfortunate. A jump spell comes down so I can get access to the scatter shot and to the Inferno. Poison is brought, which worked great since there were two witches in the clan castle along with the dragon. Or sorry, baby dragon. All right, so queen does her thing, takes down the Inferno. Hogs come over with the real champion to take down the other Inferno. Other hogs come with the Grand Warden. I need to use a heal spell early because there are a bunch of Teslers. There's a giant bomb. There was a bomb tower. Now I bring a test balloon over here. You'll see it soaks up a black air mine, a red air bomb. Now I use the Warden's ability timed perfectly with the eagle shots and the scatter shot to keep my troops um, invincible long enough. Now, I knew it was going to wear off, so I used my free spell, my second free spell, on that scatter shot. And then I did bring a heal spell, or use the heal spell rather, a little earlier than I had hoped because I wanted to make sure my hog stayed alive at this point. The sneaky goblins took down the town hall without needing a rage, so that's key. And as you can see, the dragon does survive the Giga Blast, is now at about half health. Unfortunately, that dragon does end up getting targeted by the air defense, so the dragon was not quite as useful as I had hoped it might have been. It did temporarily distract the archer tower, so that, you know, it served a little bit of a purpose. Last heal spell comes down to try to keep the hogs surviving through the wizard tower. My royal champion gets targeted by 
the uh, Grand Warden statue, so I have to use her ability a little earlier than I wanted to. One thing I want to point out, I did start sprinkling, sprinkling in wizards to start doing cleanup around the perimeter of the base. That's something you have to make sure you do, because if you don't do that early enough, you could have a time fail. Fortunately, there were enough hogs to survive and the Royal Champion, so that really helped them with cleanup at the end. And so I'm going to hit um, times four here. The rest is just clean up. You'll see this builder hut. I should have brought a miner or maybe two minions, one for testing or for a red air bomb, and then the other one to take it down. But fortunately, I had enough time, and that led to a three-star. I do want to give props and thanks to uh, Red Biz, my clan mate, who actually allowed me to practice this attack. You'll see I did it twice. The first time I forgot to bring the Royal Champion with the first set of hogs, so I only got 83%, and I didn't use a freeze spell early enough on the first scatter shot. Now, his design's a little bit different. You'll see his has the queen in the bottom right compartment and then a scatter shot nearby. So I kind of reversed the attack and where I was going to put the kill squad. So I'm just going to show you this real quick, just so you can see a little repetition. It's the same idea. A wizard is used over here to create the funnel. Baby dragon used over here. I try to decide if I can use a wizard to get enough of a wide enough funnel. And so with the building that was here in the army camp, I felt that was wide enough that my wizard could reach it without being in the range of the Inferno to then still successfully create a funnel cheap enough to get the job done to make my kill squad go where I want it to go. All right, so Ice Golem comes down king. This is the same thing you saw last time, just on the reversed side. Um, yeah, so Ice Golem dies, Rage Spell is put. I freeze the scatter shot, just like you saw before. Jump Spell allows access to the scatter shot. Um, poison the enemy CC. On this attack, my troops survived long enough to get the other scatter shot, so that was really nice. Um, from here, same thing you saw before. Hogs with the Royal Champion and the Grand Warden. Heal spell, time the Warden's ability, so that way the blimp can make it to the Town Hall. You will normally find a Tornado Trap at that location. That's just the way it happens. Second heal spell comes down. Third heal spell comes down. On this version, the air defense was back far enough that my dragon was actually able to stay alive um, longer than you saw in the other attack. I used the freeze spell. Since the other scatter shot was already taken down, the second freeze spell was used on the last Inferno. But normally you save the freeze spells for the scatter shots. And then from here, it's just a matter of cleanup. This did not have any pesky um, builder hut that I couldn't reach. So guys, every one of these five square designs is a little bit different based on whether there's multi-infernos or single-target infernos, might determine what you want to use for your attack. Whether the, exp the expos are set to ground only or air and ground might determine whether you're going to use you know, E-drags and dragons or whether you're going to use miners or hogs. And then if you can get the heroes down successfully, especially two of them with the kill squad, then you might not need the miners to assist the hogs. So these are the things you have to consider. I hope this video was helpful. We'll see you next time.